Neo Grio is a new storyteller. Neo Grio is the new storyteller. Neo Grio means new storyteller. Neo Grio is a print sound light, spit from wordsmith, bump from beat video from Cyberbelly. Tell me, when we don't read and write and watch all the light, what do we learn at first sight? Woe for word, work with word, world around word. Self has been caught up in dusties but never rusty. Pages of stench without meaning meant. So low went with artificial rhythm so one could rhyme with night. One B, two by three, hip four, hop nonstop, and image got cop. Style ain't high as edutainment. So check my education lament. Black history note, not as important when Charles Boy wrote. Don't matter, give me a black expo so I can wipe it down and write some more. 10 to 20% state education budget cuts. 1.3 to 3.5 million dollar LA Unified School District credit deficit ain't accounted up. 10 high schools supposed to be closed. Teachers need corrected paychecks so taxes won't, from W-2s won't be too wrong. I mean, pink slip layoffs, educators' jobs ain't too long. I mean, after school programs almost gone. So I rock a poet what? I rock a poet who? I rock a poet on. How did you develop your style? Well. A lot of people say that um, hip hop is influenced by poetry. And I, I think that very much. But with my poetry, I decided to influence poetry with hip hop. But I also, my roots come from jazz. Before I even knew of any jazz recordings or real re jazz, real jazz recordings but, um, besides Miles Davis, I met a lot of jazz artists and as a, upon meeting them, such as people like Bobby Bryan Jr. and um, Freddie Hubbard, uh, Billy Higgins, uh, Horace Tapscott, Baba Juno Lewis who recorded with um, John Coltrane, also Dr. Art Davis, I could go on, and these are locals, Michael Sessions, um, Dwight Tribble. What I found out is that when I was doing my poetry, they would tell me, you need to do your poetry over jazz and just let it go. Stop being confined on the page, stop being confined with your standardized way, and understand that there's a way called improv that you need to understand that your ancestors have passed down to you. The LA Times will call me a hip hop poet though. And do you take this into the workshops you do? Tell, me, tell us a little bit about the workshops that you do. Well, I have an organization called, uh, part of an organization, but uh, it was founded by me <clears throat> called Reading is Poetry. And it's a literacy organization. I'm the literacy coordinator. And what we do is we go in and we teach standardized poetry workshops, which is standardized forms of poetry such as the sonnet, the haiku, the senkane, tanka, maybe the 20 little poetry projects. With these forms, you turn around and you get uh, a project or something from the story of the, ch of the, uh, the students' minds. We teach K through 12 and the gamut. We not only just teach you know, children and students, and high school students, and middle school students. We teach parents who are not united with their with their uh, their kids. You know, foster parents. We teach uh, parents how to write a letter to their child that they're not with them, or a, a letter from the child to the parent through poetry. We use a form of epistle. Uh, so we also. Um, we just work the gamut of people. We believe poetry is used as an activist and a healer. How long have you been doing the workshops? I've been doing workshops since about um, since 2000. And then in 2005, I became a literacy coordinator at, um, at a charter school. And um, as of recent, reading his poetry, um, became a full-fledged business and program in 2008. We go through charter schools. We also work with uh, the Los Angeles Unified. Um, and only by that way is because I work for the 
um, Los Angeles Unified District School District. I work for LA's Best in their after school program and I teach my program through their program. So it's like a program within a program, but um, I'm doing things from my point of view, but it's still standardized. And I teach K through five with that. I wanted to ask you how long you've been doing poetry, when you got started? I started writing when I was about, what, 15, between the ages of 15 and 17. But uh, to say that I've really professionally been doing it, I started in 1992, 93, and that's when I first started being published, and from then on to now. I've been published in quite a few anthologies. I've been published in the first book about Tupac after his death called Tough Love, uh, Observations on Familial and Observations on the Life and Death of Tupac Shakur, edited by Michael Datcher and Kwame Alexander. You doing other projects besides the poetry? Because I know you're getting out to do readings. June 6th, the um, Lemur Par Book Fair is going on. And I shall be doing um, an intro to workshops that are called the Poet Studio. And I'm going to be doing that at the book fair at different writing stations. And this will be sponsored by Reading as Poetry and the Lemur Par Book Fair. I'll be assisted with Mike the Poet, Mike Sonson, and Best Kept, Corey Coffer, Best Kept. And these two are educators such as I am in, uh, in the poetry field and in the schools. So what we're doing is the Poet Studio introduces where the educator can assist those who've never written poetry, show them little secrets and insights of what a poet does and why he does it. Break down their own poems, but break down other people's poems. Um, and also at the same time, while performing. So uh, I'm gonna be using our students. Just recently, <clears throat> I received a grant from the uh, Department of Cultural Affairs to facilitate workshops this summer um, called urban truths from life to uh, at-risk youth and this is uh, working along with the grid which is the mayor's program and, and it's an initiative through the mayor and it's gain reduction and youth development. Poetry does a lot for the youth. It keeps them out of trouble. Those who I find that are in the most trouble are the best poets. Uh, besides just being the best poets, they they need to be shown that it's more than just about money. They need to be shown that it's more than just about uh, being a superstar. They need to be shown that these, these poems are from your feelings and your reflection of life. And it could very well help a student. When I do the reading as poetry workshops and I have these uh, standardized workshops going on, standardized forms of poetry that we're using, what you find is this, is that it's an actual textbook written by the students. So when you do that, that's revolutionizing a lot of where we're going. Right now, the biggest thing right now is children's literature written by children. That is one of the biggest sellers right now. That's great. If you don't know anything, if, how, if you've ever seen that movie Aragon, it's a movie, it's a sci-fi movie, fantasy movie about a dragon and how this guy controls the dragon. And that was written by a 14-year-old. So it was first a book, and it became a bestseller. And this was read by other kids. So this is the future, and this is what we need to invest in. And if we're talking about laying off 20, 30,000 teachers across California, we, there, there needs to be a strong campaign to, and message to poets to go out there and create your program, get your business together, and go out there and offer your services. Obama is saying we need national service for the community as far as literature and education. Well, this is the way to do it for you poets if you're out there and you don't have a job. 